Welcome back to JMC Live. That was Day of Fire to Fly. I can see in your eyes you were made to overcome. Now I'm imagining these men in, in Antarctica, and you know, this is subtropic temperatures, meaning, you know, sub Antarctic temperatures, I mean, sub crazy negative 40, 50, 60 degrees. Some of these people are wearing cloth leather clothes. The shoes are starting to tather and tear away. Um, one of the things they did is they would kill seals and stuff, and they would wear the seal skin. Sometimes they would make shoes out of it, and they would just take their own old clothes and just tie it up. Whatever they could do just to keep moving forward. Um, like I said during before the break, one of the things that Shackleton kept doing is he kept conversating. He kept communicating with all these people. Remember I told you in the beginning, you know, that he wanted everyone to go with him. Everyone is going to survive this. And he was going to do everything he could to make certain that happens. You know, if someone needed encouragement, you know, he, he'd give them encouragement or he'd give them a stern word or whatever was needed. Um, he came up with something, you know, maybe they played, um, one of the things they did, they played games of the ice. Some people got extra food. Um, there was no violence during this event. Nothing happened. Each man kept singing their own song. Because remember I told you, he ordered that one guy to keep his banjo. One of the things that happens when we are in mission survival mode, we tend to shut off the church. We tend to shut off the people. We tend to shut off the praise. We wanted to sit here and wallow in the pigsty and cry and whine and complain. And that's all we do. How are you supposed to get anything out of a test in life? Or how are you supposed to get out of your trial if all you are is in the trial? And you're probably thinking, what are you talking about? I'm talking about how can you be happy in spite of your circumstances? That doesn't mean you're completely happy. These people were stuck in Antarctica for a very long time. This didn't just disappear after a day. This is the 1800s. No, I'm sorry. Or 1700s, I believe. 1900s. Early 1900s. I got it wrong. But... <clears throat> You know, a lot of people would have thought Shackleton was this worthless guy. And he did something that people didn't think possible. He led both teams to safety. The team that went to the south eventually met up with them, and they eventually all left. They all left Antarctica with some frostbite. They had to kill their dogs and eat them. They lost the boat. But they got some of their valuables back. <clears throat> but the whole thing is, like I'm saying, about mission... Survival. And the thing is, not one man died. Yeah, nobody died. And they were they were stranded for like what two it was like two or it was like three years almost. They were stranded for long, long. Yeah, long, long, long it was time. it was years they were stranded and people thought they were dead and um uh, and not one man died. You know, if you look at um John twenty twenty seven. Stop doubting and believe. And I know Shackleton's not this great um person that some people might say uh, from a Christian standpoint he smoked tobacco so I don't want to hear about his story well who else can you compare that was just a mere human being that wasn't Jesus Christ that lived more than a month do you know how long it takes for the body to completely shut down and below zero water only 15 minutes how in the world did these people survive for months well, remember in the documentary, they said, Shackleton and the other guys, when they were walking, when they got to uh, this island, they, they when they were walking, they had to walk for like days, and they said they could feel like they they weren't alone. There was a presence with them, and they felt safe, and they, they just felt a peace, almost. And they, you know, that was probably the Holy Spirit, or even an angel protecting them, uh, you know. So, but... There are references to that they, they felt God was with them at all times. Exactly. And, <clears throat> and during this you know, whole experience that we call life, um, if you look at James 1.8, James 1.8 states, A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. When doubt seeks in and it sinks in deep, um, you tend to lose who you are. You tend to fall off the map and become something that you're not. 
And that's something that you must understand and realize today that faith is not just a prayer thing. Faith is not just a simple thing. Faith is when you can accept the fact that your brothers and sisters in Christ are not perfect. Have you ever heard that before? I'm going to say it again. Faith is when you can accept that your brothers and sisters in Christ are not perfect people. That they will never be perfect people. That they are going to mess up. And it is your job to help them. Not to criticize them and take them out. Yes, there's a point when you're supposed to, you know, point out the Word of God and say, you know, okay, hey, this is not the way it's supposed to be. But then there's another thing that happens. And it's called this endurance. Shackleton did not let any of his men die. And they were there for, for over uh, 30 days. Over no, 30 were. days. I mean, a long time. If Miranda wants to look up um, the Shackleton story real quick, and she can post the link in the chat room while I'm talking so you guys can actually look this stuff up for yourselves. You know, I'm not making this up. Um, Ernest Shackleton completed his expedition in, in, in Antarctica in a way that nobody would have ever thought of. And I'm talking about the, uh, not YouTube, but the actual definition of who he is. Uh, but, um... Uh, yeah. But you have to understand that Shackleton himself was humble. He he recognized the traits of his fellow men. When when one of his men was hungry, he fed them. When one of his men needed encouragement, he gave them the chance to play. I guess I don't know hockey or or something like that. Yeah, go ahead and post that one in the chat. Um. And he told that one guy to bring his banjo. It is key that we continue to worship God in spite of our problems. That we sing praises to his name. Even when you don't feel like it. Because when you learn to sing praises to his name and you don't feel like it, you take the power away from the devil. That's the problem today with Christians is they don't know how to fight anymore. This is a battle. And this is a battle for what you're going to do for the day. This is a battle for... Are you going to sin or not sin today? The devil is looking for ways to tear you apart left and right. And if you're going through divorce, you're going through pain, you lost this, you gained that, well, it doesn't matter what you're going through. There is something going on inside of your head. There's something going on inside of your life that seems to want to take you out. And you can't always understand and Miranda posted the link in there if you guys want to read the whole story which is part of where I was actually getting my information about there's also a uh, but it comes into humility one of the things you know I, I, I like was Billy Graham was mentioned in Sunday service and the one thing that was asked of Billy Graham was what's the best thing in the world to do and you want to be involved in ministry, or you want to do something in your life, he said humility. Um, Proverbs 15.33 The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Proverbs 22.4 Alright, the first one was 15.33 you want to put Proverbs 15.33 in there real quick? And then we're going to take a break so you guys can actually look that one up. 15.33. And we're going to take a break. Uh, 